let's go to this sequence. Um, starting with the, the peaks. This is completely handheld, so one of the things you'll see here is you don't need to be on a tripod. It's, um, um, let's start with developing that first one. The way my camera shoots, I did five exposures here. This should be the normal one. And you can see that nothing worked. Everything's either way over or way under, which is obviously why we use HDR. Um, I would just hit auto on this one and just see what it does. Because, you know what, that's actually not too bad. Bring the shadows all the way down, the highlights all the way up. And it's still not a great shot, but it's that's a good base. To me, that's where I would want to start. Does that make sense try, to try and get a base? Take, take your highlights all the way down and your shadows all the way up. That's as good as, as that picture is going to get, I think. What I do now, just to kind of, especially when I, I'm doing like 100 pictures, I will give this one, um, see I don't edit often on my laptop so it's not here. I would color that one green just so that when I go back and I start picking the pictures for the layers, Oops. I know mm -hmm. that that's an edited one and that's a good one in case I shot you know, a bunch of wave pictures or something like that. So that one's green, I know that one's good. This next one I just think is too dark to even be usable. Yeah, it seems really, yeah. really good. But, the next one is a really good, I think, sky okay. picture. So what I would do here, I do a little bit of bringing up the shadows a little bit and bringing up the exposure a little bit because it is a little dark. But I want to keep as much information as I can there. Keep in mind that all you're looking at is the sky and those, those leaves, trying to get those leaves to come out a little bit. We may not be able to get the leaves. That's but, the third one, right? Yeah. Okay. But we can get the sky, and most importantly, I think the, the, the cliff. That's what that's called. The rock. I yeah, mean. the rock thingies. I would bring up the texture, because I think rock looks really good with texture in it. And since what we're doing is bringing out that rock. I love that new texture. Yeah, I do, too. Mm -hmm. um, and then I pop up. I like to bring up vibrance and then bring down saturation. Um, I bring it up just, you know, by eye to where it looks natural. Like to me, that looks pretty much like what we saw, except that I think it was a little bit more yellow, as I recall this, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Not quite we as were, cool. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'd add a little bit of temp. I don't want too much. Of the, Sky went orange there or something. So I just go there. To me, that looks good. And we're not blowing anything out. Nothing's hitting the highlights. So I think that's good. Is everybody? Okay. And again, this is, you know, you it's do personal. your style. Yeah. yeah. You just go, you know, I'm telling you what I'm thinking, but that doesn't make me right. It's just kind of. Well, yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Okay, so then make that one green. Uh, make that one green, and then let's go to the next one, and this will be the foreground. Um, and that's obviously just a little too hot, so I bring the exposure down just a teeny bit. Oops, that was contrast. And so now we're, we're looking at a total different. Don't worry about that top being blown out. All we're looking at is that ridge line down. Um, and see, what I think is really good here is, is you can focus on making each different part exactly the way you want it. So our focus on this this shot is what? Everything from here down. down. Okay. Everything from the, the green ridge line down. Um, and again, you know, I just. I wouldn't pump up the yellow a whole lot on this as much as I would the other place. And if you really want to contrast it, you might want to make it just slightly blue. So let's say that we've got this really, really good, and we really like this, but see this area? Let's say there's a waterfall right in there, hiding. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's kind of dark, and this is kind of dark, and you don't like that. Right-click on this and go to create a virtual copy. 
And now we've got another image that we know is going to line up that's got all our same color values and everything, but we want to bring out those dark parts a little bit more. So just bring up the exposure till they're right where you want them. And all we're going to do is bring in this part of this rock and this part of this shadow so that they're not dark out of that one. So make that one green. See, the cool thing here is you can, you can make minute edits and, and like, the more and more you do this, the more and more you'll see yourself going, oh, I wish that wasn't so blown out, or I wish that wasn't so dark, or whatever. And you can either find another exposure where you can get that from, or you can duplicate this exposure and, and make another version of it that's exactly the way you want. If you wanted to do another one where you really make this... Will that this, be a layer? So yeah, yeah, these are all going to be... And my birds will also be a layer. Yeah, all of these are going to okay. be layers. I see where you're going with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And let's say, you know, if you wanted to make it a little bit more gold, or like in your last one, you're not sure if it's dark enough or light enough, you could make another version and make it lighter. Mm. Um, so now we should have four layers that are marked green. We should have the base layer, mm -hmm. the cliff, our light and darkened layer, and then our super light and darkened layer. Yes. Yeah. So um, just use control and click on all those layers, right click, edit in, and then all the way down to open as layers in Photoshop. If you forget a layer, let's suppose you open three and there were four and you realize it, or you're in there and you're editing in Photoshop and you realize, oh my gosh, this is too dark or too light, and you don't want to do the, the curves thing that we did mm -hmm. earlier, you can go back into Lightroom, make a duplicate layer, or make a new layer, a new version of that picture that fixes your problem. Right click into Edit in Photoshop, because you can't edit into the stack that you've already created. Let me show you how to do that. Um, I'll wait till this is loaded. But you would have to load it as a new image. And then once it's in Photoshop, you can copy it to your existing image okay. as a new layer. So you can always fix it. Um, oh, and again, too, the cool thing about layers is because we're doing non-destructive editing, you can always go back and, and change it up. You know, there's, oh, you know, one thing I like to do is edit it and then walk away because I tend to over... Um, yeah. yeah, so you can just go to that layer. That's another cool thing, too, is if, if you've got a layer where you're adding, say, gold to this to make it really have that sunrise feel to it, you can say, oh, that's too much, and you just go to that layer and you turn the opacity from 100% to 80% or 70%, and you're still only affecting the places you want, but it's affecting it all less and just that version of it less. So here's how we'd add a new layer if we needed to. Let's go back to Lightroom and let's... I'm, I'm going to use this image just because it's obviously something that we're going to see. You know, you're going to see it as not being part of the other set. But let's pretend this is part of the other set. I just go edit in and edit in Adobe Photoshop. So it'll it'll be its own new image in Photoshop. It'll open in a in right. a new tab after it reads the camera raw format. Then you just drag it. No, you well, you know what? I think you might be able to. I've never been able to because I'm a dummy. There's a way to do. Yeah. Yeah. You can Here's what you do. You have to grab the drop that on it. Oh, will that work? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I feel like it will, but I don't. It don't does. Know. Here's what I do. I, I just right would... click on it, duplicate layer and then duplicate it over to the document you're doing. Oh yeah, you can do that too if you go like yeah. edit or if you go select yeah. and then copy and then go to the other one and paste. And yeah, paste there's paste. always a hundred ways to do everything. Yeah, okay. So there it is yeah. on the top of my stack and I don't want it there. So, so I'm just going to delete it. Um, I'll drag it down with the can. Oh, you're right. I can do that. <laughs> Thank you. Quite trashy. That's the one thing I know about. You know, <laughs> yeah. trash yep. <laughs> okay. Another thing, sometimes when you're working with that bottom layer, it'll have that lock mm -hmm. on it, and you can't do anything with it, and you're like, I'm telling it to do it, why can't I do it? Just shift and click on that, and then all of a sudden it'll unlock it. So I'm just going to close it. you ever do it. a Command J and just create a new, new layer and just leave that base layer alone? 
Yes. So they're not messing with it? But it doesn't matter because the originals are still back in Lightroom. When this is all done... Oh, I didn't show you that in the last one. When you're all done with it, <laughs> click save, and it'll take all those Convert layers, it combine it all, compress put it, it all, and layer. put it back into Lightroom as a new image. Okay. So and tip. Yeah. Yeah. Flatten, yeah. Tiffy. Tiff. Yeah, that's tiff. important, isn't it? <laughs> that's okay. We're, it's like okay. Okay. I don't get mad, I just Sorry. hit X, and then it's back in Lightroom anyway. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so here, unlike with the, the real estate images, which I shoot in an order so that they edit really easily, these are backwards from where I like. So I just hit Control, highlight them all, go down to Layer, Arrange, and Reverse. And that puts them the opposite way. It doesn't matter, that's just housekeeping. So, so is there a certain rule of thumb as to how you should have them in order? The lighter layer on the bottom or something? Whatever works best for you. Um, like I said, I think it works best to have your base layer, even if it's not perfect, yeah. like this base layer, we're not going to use much of at all because it sucks. It, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't, the highs are burnt out and the darks are yeah. too dark, but it, it at least gives us a place to start from. Okay. How would you reverse um, that order? Um, I've got them all selected. Okay, then layer. pull down layer because you're affecting layers. So think in terms of how you would lay this out and then arrange oh, okay. and then reverse. There's no keyboard shortcut, okay. unfortunately. So, on top now we've got the super the, the layer that we made to lighten those deep shadows. So just put a hit Alt and put a mask on it. I actually made a keyboard That's shortcut, that. and this is really cool. My F4 will put down a, a black mask. Oh really? Yeah, and <laughs> I've made F2 my auto arrange. So I just hit that, and then auto arranges them. F3 will flatten everything, but not delete all the steps up to that point. Oh, so that you, I, got, you got all the Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll teach you that, too, if you want. Okay, so okay. what I would do on, oh, I would do Alt and Mask on this layer, and then there's our Sky layer, Alt and Mask on that. Oops, I have to go to the next layer to do that. And then there is our base layer. We're going to mask on each one. Mask on everything except the bottom layer. Just keep in mind that, you know, the idea is we're just going to build on top of this and keep improving it. I personally like to do the sky last, so I would grab the second from the bottom layer and put it all the way to the top. That's just how I work, but it isn't necessary. And then I start from the bottom up and start working things in. We go back to brush. Somehow my brush is white and white. What? So I just hit D and see how it's white and white? Mm -hmm. That doesn't help me. So I hit D and now it's black and white. When it's white and black, does it matter? It doesn't matter. Okay. X will switch those two. Okay. And since we're painting on black... We need a white. Yeah, we'll need white. So am I for your white? Act. Yeah. And then just adjust that... Oops. I feel like, should the opacity be 100%? Because I feel like mine comes out really strong. Your opa yeah, your opacity should be 100%, but your this flow should be 10. Flow is where you want it. Oh, and smoothing. Make that 100. That's oh. part of your problem. Okay. Mine wasn't at 100 either. It was at 10. That's what does smoothing do? Smoothing is... That is like a feathering-ish? Actually, what it does is if you draw a jagged line, it'll okay. turn it more rounded. Oh, okay. It smooths out your jerky moves and tries to make them. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Um, but it also... I have jerky moves on. Okay, so start on that, that second from the top layer. Click on the mask, so we're painting on the mask. Get second a brush. Second from bottom layer. Well, I'm yeah, sorry? Second from bottom layer. Correct. You yeah. said second from top. Just oh, I'm sorry. Sure second from bottom. Second from yeah. bottom layer. Um, click on the mask. Get the brush going. Um, and then just, now just start painting. Normal. <laughs> she said that would happen. Yeah. Weird. And just start, this is where you, this is almost like a poor man's dodge and burn, you know, because now you can start bringing in the things that you like. Like, I, I will actually make layers where, where I'll make the yellow even more pronounced so that those trees pop even more. 
But that's not the sort of thing that you would want. You wouldn't want, want yellow on those rocks. So you'd make a layer and just bring in the trees. But start just bringing in the things that you like in. Am I bringing them in from the layer above it? Um, okay, you're painting. You. Okay, see, we're painting on this layer. Yeah. So what we're doing is. What layer am I painting? The on. bottom. Okay, you're starting with this layer, okay. the bottom layer, which is your base layer. So I'm adding as, to it with this layer. Right, you're adding right. Okay. enhancements from the layer that you're on. Okay. So I'm with you now. This layer is essentially a, a stop lighter than our previous layer. Right. So, so I'm making this you're kind of dodging. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, anything that you like, the way it is dark. Like I kind of I love this right in here. So I'm not even going to touch that reflection because yeah, I think it's beautiful. Nice. Um, and then I'm also not going to touch um, the the green trees that are slashing through there because that's probably I think the boringest part of the picture. You don't want to yeah, so I don't want to emphasize that. And then just because we did it, I'm going to go to the next layer and just bring in those two dark areas that we talked about right in here and right in here, just since I did those. But you could. You know, that can be anything that you want. That could be adding a color change. Um, it could be making something darker. Um, sometimes even you may want to do a layer and blur it and then just bring in that blur right there to hide something. Does that make sense? You're only limited by what you can think of. And well, I limit me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that was the thing that, that stopped me for so long was I was like, well, I... I I wasn't thinking enough, so the more and more you go out and you look at other people's videos and how the way they treat photos, the more and more ideas you'll get for like, oh, I really like what they did on this, and you can make another layer that does that. Nice. Um, when I do portraits, I'll do a layer where I desaturate all the color and I bring up the whites, and all I'll do is bring in the whites of the eyes. Mm. And then I'll do another layer and I'll just bring up the the, um, the saturation, and I'll bring up sharpening, and that will be the eyes themselves. And that's all I'll do on that whole layer. Um, you can use that whites of the eyes one also for teeth, but don't don't make them super white. You want a little color there. You don't want that super white. <laughs> okay, so question. Yes. Should we have selected all of our layers and auto aligned them because it was hand held because oh, might you're so right I'm sorry blurry. Blurry. Okay. Did it on the last one okay here's how we do that pretending we were back yeah. one. no 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 okay. right here right now where you go oh shoot I forgot a thing okay okay go down <laughs> holding call. the shift key and turn off all your masks because you need all the layers need to be visible for this to work okay Good question, and I'm glad I screwed that up. <laughs> Literally, auto align, auto blend is the yeah. only thing I knew how to do. Yep. Now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's what we want to do. So highlight the top layer, highlight the bottom layer, select them all, and then go to edit, auto align layers, and just let it go to town. Thank you so much. Can you just leave it on auto. Yeah, yeah, just leave it on auto and let it go. Well, I noticed when I was brushing in my light parts, yeah, the trees looked all blurry, and I was like, is it me? Well, I know, part of that, it, too, it was, like is, it was windy. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but when we end up doing this, when you get that, and you'll have a lot of those, especially when you're doing like time exposures of like the Watchmen, mm -hmm. you'll have trees that are blowing in the wind and stuff. And at, at those points, you pretty much have to settle on one layer for that but, specific right, part yeah. of it. And in that case... See, you can see there's a little edge. Yeah, it's it, just a little That's edge. not, I'm a pretty rock-solid human you tripod. Are, you are. Let's try that Actually, it does have the... the image Yeah, because this was the, Z, nice. the Z7. Yeah, so sweet. it has that. Um, that's actually better to work with. Oh, really? Do you, you like think? that better? Huh? Well, you get less glare on your screen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and then Shift-X and bring those all back in again. Um, and then I guess just the top layer, once we've got those bottom layers in, start bringing in the top layer, and what I would do is um, carefully blend along this 
I, I would go on the outside of the shadow line. Um, I need to be on the mask, sorry. Yeah, because now we're doing yeah. the cliff, right? Yeah. Okay. There, see yeah. how that, and then this is the part where it's the toughest because skies really show when you don't do it well. Like, see, right in here it's a little lighter, and right up here it's a little darker. Mm -hmm. And then see how it gets really light right in there? So you have to, sometimes what you need to do is get your brush smaller and zoom in and be really touchy in there. But I, I spend a lot of time looking at my skies, especially if it's a blue like that, and making sure that they're even across it. Um, sometimes you might want to hit flow all the way back up to 100% and bring it in so that it's all the way in at the top and then hit X so that you're painting black now, bring your flow back down and then see kind of even it out like that. Does that make sense? There's all, each, each circumstance you're going to kind of want to approach a little differently. You know, you may want to bring that all the way in and then bring the opacity down to make it even out a little bit. Um, also to keep in mind that, that grays are partial blends, so you don't have, it's not an all or nothing. You, you know, the, if you're getting too much of one thing but you like everything else, you paint with black and take that one thing down. Um, and you can bring in just the rocks and not the sky, too. Um, sometimes for cleanup, I'll come in here and I'll zoom way in. Those trees will pick out. Oh, see, those trees are going to be horrible. See how they, they mm -hmm. ghost because of the wind? So the, in an instance like this, say I have to go with one specific layer for this. And then I go back to my brush, click it over to white, and put the flow at 100% because you, you have to have it the whole way. You can't have it blended. Why am I getting... Oh, because it's opacity 75%. There, if I go 100%, then if you hold the shift key while you're zoomed in, you can move around the picture. So that has to be 100% from that layer. And then I just bring that down, bring the flow down. Um, sometimes, too, what I'll do is I'll use the W, which is like the magic wand, and I'll let that W come down and select the blue you know, if I'm getting a bad edge or something like that, when you're working like something like this where you've got blue against something bright red, you're going to get a really, really good clip line. Um, so that that's a really good thing to do to, to get your edges if they're not looking right, if that makes sense. Again, it's just it's all by eye, just kind of whatever looks what looks best for you. I kind of like how if you use this really dark layer too, you can use that for your like dodging. Mm -hmm. So since everything on the bottom is black, now I can like blend in black parts just from there if I want to. <laughs> that makes any sense for anyone. <laughs> 